Hey, my friends, how's it going? Uh, I hope everything's going well. And uh, thank you so much for all the comments in the past week. I've heard from a lot of people. And I hope that I've returned uh, all the emails and texts and uh, comments. And if I haven't, just let me know and I'll do everything I can to respond right away. Uh, so today uh, I talked about the upcoming Georgia indictment. And then sure enough, the indictment came in after, uh, after I discussed what will the indictment look like. And now it's here. Uh, and I'm going to go over this in uh, in detail, and I'm going to say, at the end of the podcast, we will go over some dad jokes. <laughs> I uh, Did you think last week's dad jokes were all right? I got some comments. They actually liked it. So, I, you know, we got some dad jokes coming up uh, at the end of the podcast, as always. All right. It's a very good case from the legal standpoint against Donald Trump. If I was uh, to have to pick a, which side would win, I would definitely say that the state of Georgia would win. Um, and that's if if winning means, you know, if they would get either a guilty plea or a, uh, you know, some sort of plea deal or something. Uh, the only thing that, the, the only way Donald Trump could possibly win is by what I call the procedural outs, okay? And, and by that, I mean, if he gets the trial delayed until uh, after the 2024 election, which I think procedurally he can. Uh, And then if he wins the election, then uh, it will automatically be delayed until the end of his presidency, which would be, you know, around 2000 or 2024. I'm sorry. What's 2024 plus four years? 2028. So that would be 2028. It would be delayed till. And uh, by then... Assuming he's still alive, <laughs> right? Um, you know, it, he could have it delayed so he could prepare for it. It'll be 2031 by the time there's a trial. By 2031, is he going to be like 200 years old or 210 years old, <laughs> right? And at some point, there may just be somebody in office that says, this has been too long, so let's just, um, you know, uh, pardon him or, or or just dismiss this. It's been too long, right? So, so something like that is is, is uh, I think he would win by the, what I call the procedural out. But I think substantively, <laughs> substantively, hey, can you say that word backwards? <laughs> All right. Substantive. <laughs> They're all meeting. Meteor. Meteor. Take it easy. Substantively, the state of Georgia and Fannie Willis has the better case. All right, here we go. So let me let me go over this indictment in the state of Georgia. Now, a few things to get out of the way. This is the state of Georgia charging the former president and uh, the former White House chief of staff, uh, Mark Meadows. So we have uh, federal officials being charged by the state of Georgia. That is not necessarily unconstitutional, meaning um, if a federal officer, uh, even in in his or her capacity, violates a state law, then the state is allowed to charge a federal uh, employee. Okay, so so we get that out of the way because I've had some comments about that. Um, and and that is that is allowed. Now, they could attempt, and this is one of the things, blah, 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 jurisdiction, all right? They could attempt to try to remove the case to a federal court. I think that that would lose, meaning that uh, the state court is allowed to uh, try and have jurisdiction over a federal officer. Um, it gets a little bit dicey if if it's actually like some sort of federal uh, statute or federal law or or if it's like the federal government as opposed to charging them like individually, uh, then it's then it would be, you know, something that, that, that could be up for uh, debate. But I think that the state of Georgia, they're charging, even though these folks were federal officers at the time, they're charging them for things they did. Um, and, and they're not alleging that this was, you know, as president of the United States, he was doing this. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, uh, if he makes some sort of decision as president, then it would be the federal government that they're charging. So that would have to go to federal court. But if they're charging Donald Trump, just kind of in his individual capacity, then they could, 
you know, my opinion is they have the constitutional authority to try him in the state of Georgia. Uh, the other thing is this is double jeopardy. Uh, there is a constitutional rule that somebody cannot be tried twice for the same uh, violation. Now, believe it or not, they can be tried twice. Heck, they can be tried 1,000 times for the same crime. Isn't that crazy? But it says it can be tried twice. So, um, and, and here, Donald Trump, for the same, he got charged by the federal government. Uh, that was the third indictment, which was the second federal indictment. And a lot of the allegations there overlap with the allegations uh, from the state of Georgia. There have been uh, Supreme Court decisions that have stated uh, for the same exact action, somebody could be tried in a federal court and a state court because it's two different uh, sovereign entities, then it doesn't constitute a double jeopardy. All right. So, hey, I'm not saying it's a good law. I'm just saying that's the law. I personally think that it is a little unfair that that's the case, but that is the law. So it happens a lot of times like a police officer, if they're alleged to, you know, uh, beat up somebody or violate a civil rights type of thing, uh, the federal government can charge him and so can the state government. And that's for the same exact factual allegation. So same here. So that's not considered double jeopardy. Uh, so, so. Uh, Donald Trump has to defend himself in the federal government and uh, in the federal court and in the state court. All right. Now let's get to the nitty gritty here. Um, I th this is uh, I mean, they're basically charging Donald Trump uh, and Rudy Giuliani and John Eastman, uh, Mark Meadows and a lot of other people there. Uh, the allegations by the state of Georgia is that all of these people conspired and acted illegally together and that's uh, these these formal racketeering charges. So they're basically, I mean, in a way, this is like mafia type, right? I mean, the idea of trying to get organized crime was that, you know, it's one thing for one person to go around, you know, robbing banks. But if you get like, you know, the mafia together and they're going around, uh, you know, robbing banks or, you uh, you know, good fellas, it was, it was. And these are the guys that Jimmy put together for what turned out to be the biggest heist in American history, the Lufthansa heist. So, but when you have like a syndicate, right, of all these people, it elevates the the crime, you know, punishments. It's, uh, you know, these that's the racketeering charges and, and Rico and this and that, right? Tommy and Carbone, we're going to grab the outside guard and make him get us in the front door. So uh, the state of Georgia is alleging that. It's a, they're alleging that Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, like I said, Eastman and Meadows and all these, you know, these uh, Georgia officials, this guy, David Schaefer, they're alleging that these guys conspire together to commit these crimes. And gosh darn it. Frenchie and Joe Buddha had to round up the workers. Uh, Joe Samuel thinks the state of Georgia is correct, okay? I'm not an anti-Trumper, I'm not a pro-Trumper, like I'm just going over the law. And it is very clear that what they did in the state of Georgia was so bad <laughs> that it's, I mean, if, if I did this with my buddies, I would go to prison for the rest of my life, no questions asked. Even Stax Edwards got in on it. All right, now I'm gonna have to go over this. Uh, let's see, okay. Now, I love the, the wording that the prosecutor in the state of Georgia, members of the enterprise, she calls it an enterprise, including several of the defendants, created false electoral college documents and recruited individuals to convene and cast false electoral college votes at the Georgia State Capitol uh, in, on December 14, 2020. So all of, like 90% of this, uh, revolves around one, you know, one set of facts that happened. And that was, that goes like this. So after the 2020 election, the, you know, Donald Trump lost, right? And as we recall, he went nuts about this. He started claiming this, claiming that, you know, uh, all these fake votes, dead people voting and everything. And then all of that is okay. Everything he said was okay. It's all protected free speech. Uh, where it crossed the line is what they tried to do next. And what they tried to do next was so brazen and so stupid and so illegal uh, that it's just it just boggles my mind every time I talk about it. What they did is uh, they went in the state of Georgia, okay? Uh, Rudy Giuliani. Now, I have a good defense for Rudy Giuliani. I think he can get off the hook. This is how he could do it. 
He, his lawyer should just claim that he's so stupid and so senile and just so dumb that he doesn't understand what's going on, all right? Do you remember in Sopranos, they tried to get Junior Soprano off the hook by, by saying, okay, just, just act crazy and, and act stupid. Like, who's the president? Uh, John F. Kennedy, you know? Who, what's your name? Oh, I can't remember my name, you know? Because when that government shrink gets a hold of you, you better know how to fake this. What is today's date? A blonde with big tits and a hat full of Viagra. Yeah, cute. Fuck around. That is exactly, if I was Rudy Giuliani's lawyer, I would say, listen, just just be yourself when they ask you questions, and then they're going to realize you're such an idiot that you couldn't have possibly had the mental capacity to do any of this, all right? I mean, this guy, after the election, he just lied. Like, he made up these weird things, and I'm going to, you know, some of the weird things he made up was he said... Democratic officials got rid of all of the reporters, all of the observers, anyone that couldn't be trusted. Uh, you know, they said that there was this water main break uh, and that they cleared out all the voting areas, uh, you know, so they could do their crooked business. He said that between 12,000 and 24,000 ballots were illegally counted by the Fulte, Fulton County election workers at the State Farm Arena. All of this was just lies. Uh, he said that in Michigan, there were 700,000 more ballots counted than they were sent out to voters in the November 3rd, 2020 election. Uh, you know, I mean, it goes on and on. He said that uh, 96,600 mail-in ballots were counted in the November 3rd, 2020 election. This is in the state of Georgia. Um, despite there being no record of those ballots having been returned to the office. I mean, it just goes on and on. Like, these are just straight lies. So so then they were saying all of this. And then even when uh, the state of Georgia looked into it and got back to them and said, none of this happened. Uh, you know, Donald Trump kept saying it. Uh, Rudy Giuliani kept saying it. Um, and again, I mean, it's still, you know, basically protected by the free speech. But this is where, like I said, they're going to end up crossing the line. And this is where about 90% of this whole case lies. Uh the, the the mechanism here is that after a state decides who won the election in their state, by the way, my wife was saying, I do this too much while I'm talking. Is that right? Do I do that too much? I, I mean, I don't understand. This is the way I think, right? Okay. So uh, after the election, they get together, the, the, the state, the state of Georgia, and then they, it's, it's like kind of a simple uh, kind of procedure and, and it's never really been, except for one time in like 1960 in the state of Hawaii, after it was already decided that John F. Kennedy was going to win, there was some, some sort of challenge over, oh, who won in the state of Hawaii? But it didn't really matter uh, in the sense that it didn't determine the outcome of the election, you know, and then there was that little dispute. That was like one out of like 100,000 uh, examples. And even that wasn't a big deal. Like nobody really cared because it didn't, it didn't really matter. Uh, but here they try to... The Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, all these guys, they actually got together to try to figure out a system of how they're going to uh, keep Donald Trump in office, even though it was very clear that he did not win. And this was their uh, solution. All right. The solution was this. OK, so every state, they have to get these, uh, after they decide who wins, they have to get these these people called electors. And then the electors are nothing other than, you know, uh, party officials that kind of get together. They have uh, soda and candy and, and, and food, maybe booze. And they just, well, hopefully not booze, okay? But then they sign off a document that just says Joe Biden won here in Georgia or, you know, Donald Trump won here in Texas. That's all they do, darn it. Um, and, and then that document, this is the one for the state. This is a photocopy of the one for the state of Georgia. So they have, so Georgia has two senators and 14 house of representatives in uh, Congress. So that means they have 16 electoral votes. And all that means is whoever wins Georgia, they, they're going to get 16 people. They're called electors. Uh, there's about 540 of them or 538 in the, in the whole country. And, uh, you know, so these 16 people, signed off saying Joe Biden won. And then this, the original of this document physically gets driven or flown up to Washington, D.C. And then on January 6th, everyone kind of, you know, the, the Congress 
gets all of these from the different states and from Washington, D.C., and then they tabulate it, and they officially announce who's the winner of the presidential election, even though ordinarily it's already known, but this is just kind of the technicality of it, right? Uh, so what, what these guys wanted to do is this. They, they got together with a state of Georgia uh, Republican uh, chairman uh, of, of the Republican Party of the state of Georgia, David Schaefer. Okay, so he's also one of the folks that's um, Sha yeah, S H A F E R Schaefer, yeah, David J Schaefer. So he got together with them, he and and they said, okay, let's just get sixteen random people, and we're gonna tell those random people that they are the proper electors for the state of Georgia, and then these random sixteen fake people, we are going to get them to sign a document that we're going to call the uh, Georgia's electoral votes for president and vice president. And then these 16 people are going to sign a document that says, we, the undersigned, being uh, the duly elected and qualified electors for president and vice president of the United States of America from the state of Georgia, hereby certify. Uh, so, so we're going to get these 16 people to sign this document uh, that we're going to print for them uh, and that we, we're going to tell them that they're the proper electors for the state of Georgia. And they're going to sign saying that we convened and organized at the state capitol in the city of Atlanta. So we're going to have them physically meet at the state capitol uh, on December 14th at high noon. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? At high noon, we're going to get them to meet there. And that, uh, that the David Schaefer presided and Sean Still served as secretary. Sean Still, another uh, Republican uh, representative. Uh, that the undersigned 2020 electors from the state of Georgia cast each of their respective ballots. So all of them are going to vote for Donald Trump. And we're, even though they know that the the Georgia governor said that Joe Biden won. The Secretary of State of Georgia uh, said that Joe Biden won. What we're going to tell them, I'm acting like David Schaefer, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, right? Uh, Eastman. We're going to tell them that it was a lie and that it was fraudulent and that the true winner of the state of Georgia is Donald Trump. And then... They are going to sign this document that says, uh, witness the hands and seals of the undersigned as a duly elected. Duly elected means that they were officially the electors of the state of Georgia and qualified electors of president and vice president of the state of Georgia. We are going to have all of them sign this <laughs> document. And there's all of their signatures. And here's their names, you know. Uh, Ken Carroll, Vicky Consiglio, Carol Fisher, John Downey, uh, Gloria, I'm not going to read all of them, uh, but here they are, and they all signed this thing, and here's the first two, so we have two on this page, and then the 14 on the next page, they all signed all these documents, and all of it was fraudulent, right, I mean, all of it was just a lie, um, and then what they did is, after they signed all of this, the, you know, they walked this down to the, you know, they were at the state capitol and they walked this over to, uh, to the governor's office. And then they, they said, can, here it is. Here's the electors. <laughs> Here's the documents. Wow. Okay. And obviously the state of Georgia said, what is this? This is, this is, this is crazy. We're not going to accept. This is crazy. Okay. So the state of Georgia sent the proper one. Here's the proper one. Like I said, uh, you know, we, the undersigned, being the duly elected and qualified electors of president and vice president. The reason why this sounds the same as the fake one is because the fake one just used the language of how the, the correct one is and just had people signing the fake one. Uh, you know, the Stacey Abrams presided uh, and Sachi Varshi is secretary. They're the, the proper officials to do this. And then all of these folks signed off saying Joe Biden won, uh, and Kamala Harris won as vice president. And here's the 16 signatures of the proper electors of the state of Georgia. So all these folks signed everything there, you know, the, uh, all of it. 
says seal. So I think it was all notarized documents. Uh, and then the state of Georgia sent the official document to the, to the uh, federal Congress. Uh, and then the, uh, <laughs> as the allegations here go, the fake electors documents that was also sent to the nation capital, the on, <laughs> you know, and, and the goal was that the fake documents, and they tried this with the, uh, the federal indictment says, you know, they tried this in other states and, you know, the state of Michigan has charged, uh, you know, the Republicans in the state of Michigan for doing this similar thing. They tried to do this with Arizona, Wisconsin, like they tried to do this in the states. Uh, the, the margins were very small. Uh, so they took these fake documents to the nation's capital so that on January 6th, when there's some what should be the ceremonial kind of counting of the electoral votes, uh, and then, you know, the vice president says, OK, everything's been counted. 275 electoral votes for, you know, Joe Biden or, or whatever it was. It was he had, I think, 306 and, and Donald Trump had 230. Um, so whatever it is, the breakdown, you know, uh, there's more vote. You know, uh, Joe Biden got more than 270 electoral votes. He's the next president. That's it. That's what's supposed to happen. But instead, what the what these what Donald Trump and his people wanted was that they would have these fake documents given to Mike Pence uh, because he's the vice president at the time. He's supposed to count all this, and that their goal was because Mike Pence, in his capacity as vice president, he's supposed to count all of this and then enter who wins. Their goal was that Mike Pence would da, 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 count the fake electoral votes like am i is this a joke like did that really <laughs> that's what they wanted him to do he said i'm not gonna do that because unlike you folks i'm not going to violate the the federal constitution i, I can't just count fake votes this would be like after a football game you know let's just say the official record keeping that they have to you know the officials have to sign some sort of official document and send it to the nfl or the ncaa or whatever right this would be like going to that official, be like, oh, uh, use this card instead. We scored, the Raiders scored more points, I promise, right? Uh, that is what they tried to do. And then when Mike Pence said, I'm not going to count the fake votes, like they wanted him to elect Donald Trump as the president, saying that he won that election. Uh, Mike Pence said no. So then what they were hoping that they could do is that they by by putting in these fake votes, uh, on January 6th that he would say, oh my goodness, there's some sort of weird discrepancy here. And because there's multiple documents, I am not going to count it. Uh, and if I'm not going to count it, I'm not going to certify the election. Then their hope was, well, if it's not certified by January 6th, which is the deadline, then it can't be certified. And then since there's not going to be a new president, we'll just keep Donald Trump in there as president for the heck of it. That was the next hope. OK, or that that, you know, everybody would just do something like let's just have another election. I mean, they were really trying to screw with the results of the 2020 election. Now, what I've said before uh, is that this is uh, they by these 16 electoral votes that they tried to change for the state of Georgia. This is that the, they try to change the whole outcome of many millions of votes in the state of Georgia uh, and in, in Arizona and Michigan. Uh, and what I've said here is if Joe Samo, if me and my buddies just got together and just try to, you know, whatever, steal, let's say 50 ballots, uh, you know, like the the mail-in ballots, if we just stole 50 of them, and uh, <laughs> we didn't do this, dang it, but if we just stole 50, five, zero, and, and then just like, you know, our number two pencils or whatever, you know, change the votes. We would go to prison for forgery, for conspiracy to commit forgery, you know, for trying to change an election, you know, all of that. We would go to prison and we, we should go to prison if we tried to do that. And that's just if we tried to change like 50 votes. These people tried to change millions of votes because they were trying to change the electoral votes that represented everyone's votes. Uh, and they were trying like... Had they succeeded, unlike Joe Samuel changing 50 votes, they would have changed the outcome of the presidential election. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now, that was, uh, that all happened about two and a half, three years ago. So why the heck has it taken this long? Um, I mean, the prosecutor in the state of Georgia 
she did a really good job, dang it, like outlining what happened. Uh, she did a good job kind of making sure all of the evidence was there. And, uh, you know, what I'll go through is a couple of these. Um, okay. <laughs> she kind of itemized like like uh, each like step of the way type of thing. Uh, you know, on like, for example, November 15, 2020, Rudy Giuliani placed a call to uh, an unindicted co-conspirator and left a 83 second long voicemail message uh, making statements concerning fraud in the November th uh, 2022 election. That was like, you know, all those lies. Now, by the way, that should be a separate crime, an 83 second voicemail, <laughs> right? I used to work with this lawyer. I'm just going to call him Will H. All right. You know who you are. You are an unindicted. Co no. Uh, and he would leave these long messages. Okay. This is like 20 years ago or 15 years ago. Back then, this is like before Mateo's time, you would have to call in to get your voicemail. You can't just get it from your phone. You have to like call in a number. And then I would, I would go in there and be like, uh, March 9th, 2010 at 4.20 p.m. Uh, and then that's how it all starts, right? From the automatic thing. And then he'd be like, hey, Joe, this is Will. Uh, it's, uh, uh, what time is it right now? This is him leaving a message. Oh, it's like 4.20 or 4.15. It's Wednesday. Uh, what date is it? Uh, March. Like, he would kill me. Anyway, okay. okay. <laughs> all right. But, so she has that voicemail uh, and she, you know, uh, puts it in the indictment. And in that voicemail, he was spouting off all, all of the of the nonsense. Right. Um, and then she also in, in these other documents. Now, by the way, I I noticed like there were some uh, typos. Uh, and, and I and I would say that if you're going to, you know, like she accidentally had like act 12 and then another act 12 instead of going 12 to 13. Uh, I used to say when I was a, a teacher, if you're going to have a typo, make sure it's not in freaking bold and underline, <laughs> right? Like, anyway, uh, she had that a few times. That's not a big deal. Um, anyway, it, so here, so she she's going over, like, every single voicemail. And the reason why, like, she's kind of the, the law of conspiracy is very weird. Because did you know that you could be charged and convicted with conspiracy even though no crime was ever committed? Meaning... Like if, if a, a bunch of people got together and planned out, you know, um, whatever, a school shooting or, or a robbery or an arson or whatever the heck, just by them agreeing that they want to do it, that is the crime. Even though they didn't do it, um, you know, it's, it's what in Latin it was like an inchoate, it's called. Like it's like it wasn't completed, but just the fact that they agreed to do it, that's a crime. That's a conspiracy. Um, and then if they actually did it, then that's another crime, you know. Um, so here, so so the reason why she's getting all these emails and voicemails and and all of them talking to each other is because, you know, the the organized crime. She is showing that this is all a uh, a conspiracy. Meaning they're all getting together to do this. Um, another one of the things that she has against them: solicitation of the vice president. Now, solicitation is also an inchoate crime, meaning you can uh, be convicted of solicitation even though an actual crime didn't happen. The most popular solicitation crime, Mateo? Oh, look at this guy. This guy knows his law. Yes. Solicitation of a prostitute, okay? <laughs> meaning somebody could just try to get a prostitute and that in and of itself, that was the most popular by, you know, numbers, the solicitation uh, uh, crime is that even though the actual crime wasn't committed, so they would get like a um, vice police or undercover cops, like, you know, pretending to be a, a prostitute. And if just somebody is is talking to them, soliciting them, I've had clients that have gotten dignity. Not, uh, not personally, this is, you know, as a lawyer, I've represented some of these people. Just by them talking to the undercover cop, they are soliciting. Okay, so here she's charging Donald Trump and, and his cohorts. Solicitation of the Vice President of the United States, members of the enterprise, that's code word for the conspirators, the mobsters, including several of the defendants, corruptly solicited the Vice President of the United States to violate the United States Constitution and federal law by unlawfully rejecting uh, electoral college votes cast in Fulton County, Georgia, by the, by the properly elected electors. All right. Members of the enterprise also corruptly solicited the vice president to reject votes cast by duly elected and qualified presidential electors. So what that means is by them 
just by them telling the vice president, asking him, uh, encouraging him, soliciting him to count the fake votes and to reject the proper votes, just by doing that, that is a crime itself, okay? That is one of the, the charges. Um, and then the big one, you know, again, the, she, she outlines the, the, the procedures that I talked about, about that fake electoral votes. Like she outlines when they got these people together, how she, they got them to convene, how they tricked them. And by the way, eight, at least eight of the 16 as of the time uh, of this recording, eight of those 16 fake electors, they got uh, an immunity deal. Uh, in some words that they would say, they snitched, <laughs> right? They agreed to cooperate. I'm trying to, what are all the different ways? They agreed to cooperate, an immunity deal. You know, I've been working with the government, right, Tom? Don't say it. They snitched, you know, like however you want to look at it. They agreed to tell the prosecutor that in exchange for them not getting in trouble, they agreed to tell what their version of the truth, which is this is what we were told. We were told this is OK. We were told by these officials. We were told this is what we should sign. We were told that we were the proper electors. So, uh, you know, so she has, you know, that evidence from them. Uh, let's say that da, 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 da. she has. Oh, my goodness. She actually has emails the, that were going back and forth between these folks. Uh, and one of the emails, this, this John Eastman, he is an attorney that is in the, well, let's say, getting disbarred in the state of California or about to or could be or whatever. And he's being charged here in this case. It was a memorandum titled Privilege and Confidential December 23rd Memo on January 6th Scenario. Uh, and he states, as for the hearings, I think both are unnecessary. The fact that we have multiple slates of electors demonstrates the uncertainty of either. That should be enough. And I agree with Ken. That's Kenneth Chesborough. One of the other things in a conspiracy is they have to get together and agree. You know what the best evidence is? If there's a document that says we agree, and that's what she has. She has this document that see that says, I, John Eastman, a charged conspirator, and Kenneth Chesborough, a co-conspirator that's charged, agree uh, that the, you know, the Judicial Committee hearings on the, un the Constitutionality Ele Electoral Count Act could invite counter views that we do not believe should constrain Pence in the exercise of power. So, so they're actually writing documents that say, let's give these fake votes votes to uh, to Mike Pence, and let's just hope he counts the fake votes. Uh, some of the other things, here are some of the other things that uh, R Rudy Giuliani, the worst thing you could do, if you said something like, I think that that, that election had to be wrong, that's one thing. But he made like very uh, detailed factual allegations that were just blatant lies. And then he, even when he was confronted, he just never corrected them. Uh, here's some more of them. So this is uh, Rudy Giuliani saying, 2,560 criminal felons voted illegally in the November 2020 election in Georgia. Complete lie. 10,315 dead people voted in the November 2020 election in the state of Georgia. Another lie. Like, what the fudge, dude? I'm telling you, Rudy Giuliani, give me a call. I got a good defense for you. The defense of pure stupidity. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. Am I done making fun of Rudy Giuliani? I mean, he was a good lawyer in, in the heyday. You know, uh, so it's kind of unfortunate, like, like what happened to him. Um, and then obviously I won't go over this because I went over it in, in some of the other ones, the, uh, the tweets from Donald Trump, they have to prove that Donald Trump, uh, specifically was involved in this if they want to get him. And the beauty is that they have, uh, you know, paperwork that was sent to him. They have, uh, you know, him tweeting about this, like he tweeted Mike Pence, uh, you know, you have to count these votes. Like Mike Pence, you have to come through with us on January 6th. Mike Pence, you have to, you know, declare I'm the winner or don't declare Joe Biden the winner. Like he tweeted it and he said it. So it's, so they have, I mean, it's gonna be impossible, 
you know, for him to say that that he was not in on this. Um, of course, he doesn't have to say anything because he's allowed to uh, to to not testify, right? And and his lawyers probably told him, "Don't talk about this." Is Donald Trump good about not talking about this? Like he keeps talking about this, right? Uh, and he obviously he, he talked about it all then and there. Okay. Um, and then even the tweets. Now, so the state of Georgia has, you know, the tweets that Donald Trump. Um, he did it. The funny way that she says this. Okay, Donald Trump caused to be tweeted from the Twitter account at real Donald Trump. Like, I don't know why lawyers do this. They're so wordy sometimes. Like, just say Donald Trump tweeted. Damn it, right? Can, can, we, can we use tweeted as a verb? Because <laughs> she is anyway. Caused to be tweeted. Uh, anyway, all right, all right, all right. Um, if Mike, this is Donald Trump's tweet on January 6th. If Mike... Pence comes through for uh, with for us. We will win the presidency. Many states want to decertify the mistakes they made in certifying incorrect and even fraudulent numbers in a process not approved by their state legislatures. Uh, Mike can send it back. So it, Donald Trump, for her to try to prove that he's in on the conspiracy, uh, she has that proof in his own tweets that he admitted he sent that that say yes. Mike Pence, count the incorrect electoral votes, right? That's what he's saying in essence. Uh, don't certify the election, send it back, and don't call Joe Biden the next president. Uh, you know, he tweeted, uh, states want to correct their votes. Uh, all Mike Pence has to do is send them back to the states, and we win. Do it, Mike. This is a time for extreme courage. Um I I don't want to go through all of the evidence. Uh, I'll just tell you that there is a lot of evidence, <laughs> right? The other thing that, you know, you'll hear something like, you know, there's 41 counts. Um, there is a thing with the prosecutors do sometimes. Uh, there's two ways to what we call stack the counts, I guess you could say. Stacking, right? There's two ways to do it. Let's say... Uh, um, you know, let's say Joe Samo is drinking and driving. Nothing I've ever done. But but it's like uh, count one, Joe Samo drinking and driving on Highway 8, <laughs> right? Count two, you know, he parks and he gets back in his car and he drives uh, home. Uh, that's count two. Count three, you know, uh, he stops at a red light. The car turns off. He turns it back on and he, he keeps driving on that road. That's count three. So you're stacking kind of like the same uh, violation, you're stacking it over and over. Okay, that's one thing. Another way to uh, stack the counts is by, there's one one thing that I did, let's say uh, drinking and driving, right? And then they'll they'll just stack the, the number of violations, like count one, drinking and driving, count two, reckless driving, count three, endangering, you know, whatever, uh, a minor, count four, e you know, operating a car illegally, count five, right? So, so those are two ways that you can kind of like, I guess, you, you know, stack counts. Uh, this prosecutor did both of them, right? Because some of the, ah, whoa, good catch. Did you see that? All right. So some of these, I mean, they're, they're, they're the same factual allegations, but she's, you know, uh, like one count is false statements and writings. Another count, false statements and writings. Okay. Uh, another one, solicitation of violation of oath. Uh, so, and then another count, solicitation of violation. Oh, so she is, you know, stacking the counts, but, but it's not, I don't know. It's not like illegal to do that. But, but the only reason I'm saying is because you will hear in the news, 41 counts, you know, against Donald Trump and his, and his co-conspirators. It does not necessarily mean they did 41 illegal things. Uh, it could mean, like I said, that they're just a-holes. No, I'm just kidding. They're, they're not a-holes, but this was pretty crazy. Now, uh, back to what I was saying about the procedural outs. I, I've said this over and over. Donald Trump will, don't worry, my friendly Trump followers and, and lovers. He will never spend a day in jail. He's not going to go to jail over this. He could at any point probably strike a deal with them saying, okay, I'll plead guilty and no jail time and no this, no that. They'll agree. Uh, but even if he doesn't uh, do that, the the time that it'll take this is so many things and and it could all be delayed by the election and especially if he wins that um i just i don't see how this could go to trial anytime in the next six years or seven years and then uh, and if he wins the elections it'll be like another 10 years so 
I don't foresee, you know, just for procedural reasons and various delays. And then if he ever gets pardoned by just any governor of Georgia can pardon him for the federal cases, it would have to be a president that pardons him, uh, which might happen just to, to freaking relieve the country of all this headache. Um, so either he gets pardoned one day uh, by some or all of them, or the trial is just delayed forever, or some judge gives him some sort of procedural out saying, you know, oh, you can't have the state of Georgia uh, prosecuting a, a former federal uh, president. It has to be only a federal uh, issue. It can't be a state issue. You know, some sort of procedural out. Uh, but overall, I mean, come on. Even, like, this was crazy. Like, the fact that he tried to do this, the fact that these other folks tried to do this, I don't... Uh, I just, other than the procedural issues, they are freaking guilty. Uh, all right, what do we promise? A few dad jokes here. Da, 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 da. Here's one. Now, my wife and, uh, and a friend of ours, where we were hanging out, we were watching women's, uh, the, the Women's World Cup, and there was a lady on the, you know, one of the girls on the British team. Her last name is Bronze, Miss Bronze. And they're like, oh, her, her last name is Bronze. And then I said, yeah, she always comes in third. <laughs> oh, you don't see it. There's like 18 people here. They're all laughing. Okay, and I'm lying, all right? <laughs> all right. Why can't a nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. Da, 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 da. Why did the belt go to jail? Because it held up a pair of pants. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Why did the barber win the race? Da, 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 da. Because he took a shortcut. Woo! All right, see you next week. <laughs>